We all know that one of the biggest problems with Apple Silicon Macs is software compatibility, especially with 3D modeling software such as Blender. But this is rapidly changing and recently Blender announced version 3.1, which introduces native metal support to all Apple Silicon Macs. In this video, I'm going to be doing a deep dive into just how much Blender performance has improved, including some benchmarks, real life workflow rendering, and also comparing a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook against a Windows laptop with an RTX 30 series GPU to see which is more powerful. Okay, so the main theme of this video is going to be comparing the previous version of Blender, which was 2.93, against the new 3.1 Alpha. I'm gonna be focusing on Cycles, which has now been upgraded to Cycles X in the 3.0 version of Blender. It's also important to take the results in this video with a grain of salt, as this is an alpha version after all. So what that means is there's probably gonna be quite a few updates and some more changes that gets made over the next few weeks and months before we can see the true potential of what 3.1 can provide. Okay, let's just get straight into the results. Now I'm using a base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook on the latest version of Mac OS. Let's begin with some cycles rendering. Starting with the BMW project, there was a massive improvement with render times going from five minutes and 23 seconds on Blender 2.93 to just one minute and 14 seconds on Blender 3.1 using the Cycles X render engine. That is four times faster. Now rendering out a single frame from the Splash Fox demo scene, again using Cycles, there was an improvement from five minutes and 24 seconds to two minutes and nine seconds, or two and a half times faster. Now in the tree, leaves and grass geometry node scene, single frame render times improved from 17 minutes and 42 seconds to just four minutes and 17 seconds, or four times faster. And finally, on the Lone Monk demo scene, which is a pretty demanding scene to render, times improved from two hours and two minutes to just 24 minutes and 46 seconds. So across the board, it seems like Cycles rendering has improved anywhere from twice as fast to four times as fast, depending of course on the scene and its complexity. Now, speaking of using the GPU or CPU to render in Cycles, you can actually choose one of three different options. So if you go edit, preferences and then cycles render devices on your Mac, you can select either the GPU or the other option, which is the CPU or both. You have to be obviously on Blender 3.1 for this. And depending on which option that you choose, the render times can vary quite a bit. For example, on the BMW scene, you can see that selecting both the CPU and GPU results in the best time, while selecting only the GPU is a close second, followed by only the CPU, which is obviously the worst. Now, rendering a single frame using cycles in Splash Fox, there is also a difference. And likewise, in the Lone Monk demo scene, when using both the CPU and GPU, render times improve by about five minutes. So which option is the best? Well, I found that when selecting both the CPU and GPU during a metal render, the CPU cores went straight to 95 degrees Celsius, and sometimes even higher, and the high performance CPU cores get slammed as you can see here while rendering the BMW scene. And this is only for a relatively small performance gain. Now this inevitably means increased internal temperatures, which also means the fan noise will be louder. So if you're after pure performance, it seems like using the CPU and GPU during cycles renders is the way to go. But if you're okay with the roughly 15% performance hit, or even less in some examples, to get a quieter, cooler laptop, just select GPU only. All right, so let's get into the exciting stuff, shall we? This is an RTX 3060 Razer Blade 14. It's not the most powerful RTX laptop out there, but it's also not the weakest. And I selected it because it's very close in price to the base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. 
Now you probably already know about Nvidia's CUDA technology, but this doesn't actually utilize the ray tracing cores of the RTX 30 series GPUs. For that, we need Optics or OptiX, whichever way you pronounce it, which is now fully supported in Blender and is also much faster and more efficient than CUDA as you can see in this example. Now, like the Apple Silicon MacBooks, if you jump into Edit Preferences System on your Windows computer, you can see all the options you have available. Now that we've unlocked those juicy ray tracing cores alongside the tensor cores of the RTX GPU, let's render some scenes and compare it with the MacBook. Spoiler alert, the MacBook gets destroyed I'm sorry, Tim Cook, but it's just the truth. Now, starting with the BMW scene, when using both the CPU and GPU to render on the MacBook versus just the GPU with optics enabled on the Razer, the Razer was three times faster. Quick side note, I did see some variances with the Razer when selecting either GPU only, CPU only, or both GPU and CPU just like we saw with the MacBook, although it was slightly less pronounced on the Razer, possibly due to the Windows version of Blender being slightly more optimized than the Apple Silicon version. Anyway, moving on to a Splash Fox single frame cycles render. Once again, the Razer destroyed the MacBook, finishing almost four times faster. On the tree, leaves, and grass geometry node scene, the MacBook finished in four minutes and 17 seconds versus just 37 seconds on the Razer. For the lone monk scene, once again, the gap was extremely pronounced, even more so because this is a difficult scene to render and usually takes a fair amount of time. One thing to note here is that on scenes such as Nishita Sky demo or the classroom demo, when both devices were limited to CPU only, the difference was much more minimal. Now, this is impressive because this is a base model M1 Pro chip with six high performance cores and obviously the two high efficiency cores, making it eight cores in total, versus a Ryzen 5900HX CPU, and there's really not that much difference. About the same as their Cinebench results, actually, which was pretty cool to see replicated in Blender. And yes, before you ask, even while doing EV renders, there is still a noticeable gap between the two. Now, even though performance-wise, the Razer was beating the MacBook, you have to consider other factors as well. For example, typically poor battery life on performance Windows laptops, obviously get increased fan noise, and it also needs to be attached to the charger to get maximum performance out of the device. To put it into perspective, check out how many watts each laptop was pulling from the wall while rendering the lone monk scene using both CPU and GPU. Now that is a massive difference, even more so when you consider the MacBook can render at full performance while on battery. And remember, this is an RTX 3060, not even an RTX 3080. So the wattage actually isn't even that bad here. And also Razer sort of underclocks this particular GPU slightly as well. So there are GPUs out there on the market that are gonna suck up a lot more wattage than what this device can. Okay, so what have we learned from this most recent 3.1 update? Well, I think it's a massive and much needed update for Apple Silicon Max. Cycles renders are between two and four times faster, and this is only the beginning. Again, guys, remember this is an alpha version of Blender, and is the first time metal support has been included for Apple Silicon Max. So these results may change with additional updates. Who knows what it's going to be like in the next one to two years as more support and more updates are released. But like you saw in the video, currently even an entry level RTX 30 series gaming laptop, which was 200 US dollars cheaper, by the way, don't forget that, destroyed the MacBook in almost every way performance wise. And I think we'll continue to do so for the near future until we start seeing a lot more effort and a lot more development into things like supporting metal on the Mac and also Apple just potentially coming out with some more beefy GPUs in the future. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one.